Hello, uh, my name is Jordan. I'm an integration engineer uh, here at Bitwarden. And today we're going to walk through the uh, self-hosted installation on Linux. Uh, I've got a uh, VM over here uh, and I've got our uh, installation guide over here. Um, we are going to walk through, I've already configured a domain name, so we're going to get started with uh, installing Docker and Docker Compose uh, first here on this uh, Ubuntu machine. Uh, so <clears throat> for um, uh, any uh, Linux distribution, uh, we're just going to be following uh, Docker's installation guide um, for installing uh, Docker and Docker Compose. So we're checking to make sure that uh, GCP didn't include any uh, Docker packages because we want to install uh, using uh, the uh, official repository here. So we're just gonna run through and uh, run these prereqs here like so. Okay, no errors. And then we are going to grab the latest version of Docker. Go ahead and say yes to that. That's gonna install, and while that's spinning up, pull up the uh, Compose installation. So you can do either the uh, Compose plugin or uh, standalone. Uh, we will go ahead and install the plugin method for Debian based repositories here. Did that copy? Oh, silly. So it looks like this button is broken on the Docker website. So be sure to copy that command manually. All right, so Compose plugin is already installed, great. So uh, now we go back here uh, to the Bitwarden guide and we run through setup uh, to go ahead and create a Bitwarden user. We wanna run Bitwarden as a separate user just for isolation purposes. Go ahead and generate this user. Uh, because we're on Ubuntu, we've already set a password, so we don't need to set a new one. Uh, the Docker group was created by the installation, so we can skip straight to adding the Bitwarden user to the Docker group, setting up that directory, and its permissions. And we're gonna switch over to the Bitwarden user and that newly created directory. Now we're gonna pull down the bitwarden.sh script and then we're gonna run through the Bitwarden installer. So I've got my domain name that I set up ahead of time. We are gonna use Let's Encrypt. Give Let's Encrypt an email address and we're going to pull down the CertBot container, which is going to reach out to Let's Encrypt and grab us a certificate. We're gonna use the default database name, and then we're pulling down the setup container, which is going to run through the rest of the installation for us automatically in the background here. So for this section, I'm gonna go ahead and pull my screen out of the recording so I can put in some license information off screen. Just pasting in my installation ID and my installation key. And then we'll get this set back up again. It's now generating a uh, certificate for the identity service on EC2. This takes a little while. This usually goes faster on machines that have uh, better cryptographic performance. All right, so we can go ahead and pull that up because my sensitive information is pulled off the screen. Normally here, uh, you would go in and you would edit uh, the BW data ENV 
global.override.env file. Uh, we're going to skip it for the purpose of this demo because that file is uh, contains other sensitive information, and we're going to go ahead and go with the defaults. Running the bitwarden.sh start command will pull down the rest of the containers, and we'll then start it up. Once it's up and running, we will be able to load the web vault uh, and go ahead and create our administrative user. For the purposes of this demo, we won't be creating the administrative user, but I will show that the web vault is up and running. In just a few ticks, it's going to complete the downloading and extraction of all of those container images. Just grabbing all of the layers of the various Bitwarden self-hosted microservices here. CertBot is going to run every time uh, you restart Bitwarden to make sure that your certificate doesn't need renewed. Indeed, it does not because we just generated it. The setup container is going to run here to make sure all of our configuration makes sense, see if there are any changes, and then it's up and running. We're going to use uh, the watch command to check on Docker PS every two seconds until all of the containers are up and running, at which point we can go open up the web vault. So we're just waiting on these admin and SSO. Uh, these are always the last to start and finish their health checks because they depend on every other service. Uh, but at this point, we can go ahead and pull up our web vault, which is right over here. So with that, we've completed the installation uh, of Bitwarden. Like I said, uh, you'd normally, normally go in and uh, configure some settings uh, in the uh, global.override.env. Um, all of the steps that I walked through are uh, described in the Help Center article, as well as the post-installation configuration in that ENV file. Uh, if you uh, need any help getting uh, Bitwarden set up, feel free to reach out to us, bitwarden.com contact. Have a good one.